News reports frequently argue that even a mild increase in global temperature could lead to a catastrophic melting of the polar ice caps. But what does Earth's climate history tell us? We happen to have temperature records of Greenland that go back thousands of years. Greenland has been much warmer. Just a thousand years ago, Greenland was warmer than it is today. Yet it didn't have a dramatic melting event. Even if we talk about something like permafrost, a great deal of the permafrost, that icy layer under the forests of Russia, for example, seven or eight thousand years ago melted far more than we're having any evidence about it melting now. So in other words, this is a historical pattern again, but the world didn't come to a crunching halt because of it. Professor Siunishi Akasofu is head of the International Arctic Research Center in Alaska. The IARC is the world's leading Arctic research institute. Professor Akasofu insists that over time, the ice caps are always naturally expanding and contracting. There are reports from time to time of big chunk of ice uh, break away from the Antarctic continent. Uh, those must have been happening all the time. But because now we have a satellite, that can detect those. That's why they become a news. This data from NASA's meteorological satellites shows the huge natural expansion and contraction of the polar sea ice taking place in the 1990s. Actually, all the TV programs that relate to a global warming show a big chunk of ice falling from the edge of the uh, glaciers. But people forget that ice is always moving. News reports frequently show images of ice breaking from the edge of the Arctic. What they don't say is that this is as ordinary an event in the Arctic as falling leaves on an English autumn day. They ask me, did you see ice falling from the edge of the glaciers? Yes. That's the spring breakup. That happens every year. Press come to us all the time, you know, I want to see something that the greenhouse disaster, I say there is none. <laughs> Alarming television programs raise the fearful prospect of vast tidal waves flooding Britain. But what causes the sea level to change and how fast does it happen? Sea level changes over the world in general are governed fundamentally by two factors. What we would call local factors, the relationship of the sea to the land, which often, by the way, is to do with the land rising or falling than anything to do with the sea. But if you're talking about what we call eustatic changes of sea, worldwide changes of sea, that's through the thermal expansion of the oceans, nothing to do with melting ice. And that's an enormously slow and long process. People say, oh, I see the ocean doing this last year. That means that something changed in the atmosphere last year. And this is not necessarily true at all. In fact, it's actually quite unlikely because it can take hundreds to thousands of years for the deep ocean to respond to uh, forces and changes that are taking place at the surface. 